Good, good afternoon. Um, obviously, I'm excited about the victory. Uh, it was a hard-fought battle uh, to the very end. And uh, when I told the guys at halftime, I just said, hey, guys, we were built for this. You know, we have mental and physical stamina. Uh, we were built for the second half. And the guys did a great job of executing when they needed to in the second half of this game. And coming up with, obviously, the big interception at the end to seal the deal. And then uh, you know, the kick by Cairo to, uh, to get the win. And that's, that's the biggest takeaway for us is just being resilient. Um, you know, there's a lot of things to clean up from the game. I thought we started the game off well. We scored in our first two drives. That was excellent. Um, you know, they answered with one after that. Um, I thought we did a good job, really, with uh, running the ball. You know, we ran the ball extremely well. Uh, we wanted on defense to really do a good job of stopping the run. That was one of our goals. Um, they had, I believe, 3.8 uh, per rush, which is just over 3.7. Um, and then we wanted to tackle better, and I thought we did that. I thought we got up on the runners. I thought we ran our feet better um, during the course of this game. Um, obviously, some great performances by Herbert, you know, with him running the ball. But that goes to who? Who does that go to? The offensive line, right? You can't do it without those guys. You can't do it without the perimeter blocking. They had an excellent job there. Eddie Jackson, you know, the, the one interception by them, and then we answered with our interception in the, in the end zone. What a great job there. He also forced the fumble. We thought he performed really well. Um, and, the, and the defense uh, perform really well in those sudden change moments. You know, when you get the ball on, on the minus field there, we always talk about rising up, you know, and forcing them to a field goal or a block it. And we got to block it there. And then the offense gets sudden change on a short field, they score touchdowns. And I thought we did a good job with that. That's something that we always talk to the guys about during the course of the week. Um, you know, and then obviously we talked about, you know, Cairo three for three, you know, hit one for 47 50, and then the game winner. I mean, he did an excellent job. Great operation by the field goal team there. Um, great hold, great kick. Um, nice job there. And then obviously the, the play that ended the game with Blackson tipping it. And then Roquan having that focus and concentration to be able to look that ball all the way in. When it's below your waist, that's a, that's a hard catch because the ground comes into your vision. And you really got to look that all the way in. And we work on that. And he did a great job of focusing in on that and then taking it in uh, to set us up for the game winning field goal. But, uh, I will open up questions from that. What's the status on David? Montgomery? Yeah, David Montgomery, uh, it's good. Um, it's, he's going to be day to day, so that's positive. So we'll see where he is tomorrow. We'll re reevaluate it from there, but uh, it's a positive for sure. Is it his knee, man? It's lower leg right now, so we'll just look at it. Um, and again, there's a couple things going on there, but we'll look at it. Matt, the obvious question is your young quarterback, Justin Fields, struggled today. How do you instill confidence in him after a game like that? And how do you help him bounce back from that? Yeah, I just think that is when you're, when you're working with a young quarterback in a new offense, I think that the people around him have to be solid and have to be good. So that's important for us, meaning that the protection has to be good, the run game has to be good, the defense has to be really good, okay? And special teams, we got to be awesome. And what you do is you support that quarterback while he's growing and while he's going through this. And there's going to be good. There's going to be, be uh, things that he has to improve on. But that's in the whole football team. The whole football team's like that. We all watched the game. We all saw it. We need to improve. Just I thought we took a step in the right direction, improving our football team from week two to week three. And we're going to have to continue to do that. You know, we're a young group. Not only a young offense, we're a young defense. We got a young group across the board, and it's about being technically fundamentally sound. Like for example, on defense, we said we want to improve on tackling and the run defense. Well. We did that. Was it perfect? No, it wasn't perfect, but we need to improve. So that's just where we are. We're in the uh, developmental stage. We want to improve every single week and get better. And it's certainly good to do when you win the game, too. Matt, do you have a tangle of factors right now in fields where it's, it's his decisions that he's making, but also the receivers, the offensive line? Like, what, what all is is a factor in why the passing game well, is not working? Yeah, on any unit, on any unit, it's always everybody. It's always all 11. You can never just point to one guy. I don't believe that. I don't think you do that. I don't think that's the, the, the answer. It never is. So it's it's everybody. You know. So it's it's the protection. It's the it's the route combinations being in sync. It's it's everything. You know. So all 11 would include him, but I think it's everybody. At the end of the first half, uh, you went into the locker room to, uh, taking the three timeouts. What was the communication like between you and the coaching staff on that? And what led to that decision? Yeah, so right there we were at 46 seconds. So we want to bring that down on the minus field to 35 seconds because they had multiple timeouts. Because if, if you get that first down, you get and they bang timeouts and we punt the ball, then they have a rebuttal drive. Okay, 
But here's where we got to be better, okay? Because we were in 13 personnel going third and one, okay? And then we subbed. Once I saw him sub there, I should have called timeout at, at 35 seconds, and we have been five. So I got to be better there on that situation right there. We're going from 13 personnel back to 11 once we got the first. Ben, why was, why was Roquan uh, so much bigger factor in this game than the previous two? Well, I just think he's getting comfortable in the defense. You know, I thought the linebackers played downhill. You know, so it's it, a big difference between going from a 3-4 to a 4-3. You know, I've had a lot of linebackers because we switched over. You know, when I was in Dallas, we switched over. When, you know, when I went to Indy, they were 3-4s going to a 4-3. And what happens is it's different. He's playing off the defensive lineman in front of you a little bit different. And it's more of a speed position. It's more of a downhill attacking position rather than a lateral slide position. So I just think he's, he's starting to really feel that. You know, he's starting to feel that downhill speed that he can get, and, it, it, and it's coming along. And that's that, happened the three places I've been before. Is that closer to, to the Darius Leonard kind of game you're used to seeing from, that, from the know, star linebacker? That, to me, is, is getting there. You know, with that position, that's a hot position, and we need uh, production out of that. And he certainly had a really good game today. Now, what would you say to people who might be more concerned about the step back that Justin Fields might have taken than they are excited about the step forward your football team? Yeah, like I said, it's always going to be about the football team. You know, so we're going to develop this whole football team, and he is one piece of that for sure. But you know, as we grow, we got to get better at all spots. You know, run defense, run offense, pass defense, pass offense, the whole thing. And if we make steps, we keep making steps as we go. We're going to like what we see. How encouraging was it for you to have your young corners had to get picked on, but then kind of lie down? With you? Yeah, they did a nice job. You know, you throw out those, uh, you got a couple rookies, you know, three rookies in the secondary, and I thought they performed decent. You know, they did a nice job. And there's certainly, I just talked to both of them in there, hey, everything's a learning experience, and you can get better from every performance. You know, we won the game today, we're going to get better. And you know, we're going to get better with the coach. You know, the players are going to get together, we're going to improve. We'll take that to Wednesday to improve for next week. What happened on the fake punt? Okay, so they motioned the guy out. We were in, we were in defense today, so we had two A gap players there. Uh, we liked it right there. I think our reaction on defense needed to be better. We were in a safe punt there. They motioned the guy out to get our eyes off the the action, and they snapped it. They went blocked and they got it by what half a yard or so. I don't know the exact yardage, but uh, we just got to react quicker on that play. Matt, what did Jalen Johnson's absence uh, require out of Kyler Gordon? Well, uh, nothing really. Because Jalen Jones you know, was in his, in his spot, you know, and uh, it was really really the same, you know. And then he had to play some more base reps, uh, but uh, you know, just more, you know, more on his plate a little bit, you know. So he, I thought he handled it well, you know. I thought he had some good plays in there today, uh, some plays that he can learn from. But uh, and certainly, you lose a, lose a great player like Jalen. There's a, there's an issue there. We had to, you know, change it mid stroke. We were right in the middle of the week, you know, so we had to change that. The guys, the defense staff did a really good job with that. Are you seeing the subtle signs that Kyler is starting to pick things up as he goes, as he faces all these different types of offenses and run very sophisticatedly, that he's starting to kind of just bank these files on how to play certain situations? Yeah, I do see that because I'm working closely with him. You know, me and Alan and the DB coaches are working closely with him, and we're hand-in-hand hand with him right now, really doing a good job of trying to understanding what and why, you know, what's going on. Who's the skill set you're covering? What do you need to do in this situation? How do you need to, you know, uh, attack this play if you're in this coverage? So he's he's working diligently to get that done and improving. Man, as a first-year head coach, how do you handle getting the win to show up when you want, but also balancing that the idea that what you need to clean up going forward? Yeah, that's just our model, right? The old 24-hour rule. We really believe in that. So we'll look at this. We're going to celebrate, you know, for 24 hours if we won the game. We're all excited about it. Go back with our families, enjoy the night. And then we'll get there tomorrow morning, and then we'll look at the tape, start making corrections, and then when 24 hours is up, we move on to the next game and learn from each performance. Man, winning Two close more. games is such a big thing in the NFL. How, how do you feel you manage this game, especially for a close game where it seemed like there were a lot of decisions you had to make? Yeah, there was, there was a lot of decisions, and I think we did a nice job of, of working with the offense and defense and special teams, working with the coordinators we went through, and it turned out in our favor this time. How would you describe last your game meeting with Lovey? It was great. It was great. We just talked, uh, just you know, visited for a little bit, uh, talked a little ball, and uh, it was pleasant. Thank you.